Thank you, Mike. Thank you for coming today. Um, yeah, I'm part of the team at the U.S. Geological Survey uh, on a project looking at metals and biosolids. Biosolids are treated sewage sludge from municipal wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we are finding some precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, as well as some industrial metals such as copper and zinc. Uh, it's important to, to know that the source of these metals in, in the biosolids and the sewage sludge uh, can have a variety of sources. It's not limited to human waste. Uh, the wastewater treatment plants get uh, whatever goes down the, the drain at, at homes and, and in metropolitan areas uh, from businesses and perhaps light industry. So thinking about your home, you have sources from the shower, uh, the bathroom sink, the kitchen, the garbage disposal, you know, dishwasher, and, and laundry. So you have a ver variety of sources in the house uh, that's, that's not just limited to uh, human waste. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, so we're, we're seeing uh, some particulates of, of uh, some of these metals in the biosolids material. They're very small. Um, there's, uh, they're about a hundredth the width of a human hair. We're also thinking that there are even smaller particles present that we need some specialized equipment to look for. So that's a, a research, ongoing research pro project for us. And there's probably also a significant portion that's, that's chemically bound to the biosolids material itself. It's very high organic matter, high iron. So understanding the form of the metals is, is something that, that we're currently working on. And knowing that will hopefully help us understand how best to remove the metals from the biosolids so that they could be recovered and reused. Uh, so this is really the first step in the process in, in, in knowing that the, the metals are there. The gold concentration, if it were in rock, is something that might be of interest uh, as a low-level gold deposit for something like heat bleaching. Uh, but there's a, a big difference between rock and biosolids. So there's a lot of technological uh, challenges that need to be overcome in, in understanding how the metals are present and how best to remove them and recover them so that they can be put in a usable form. It's not as easy as, as just taking the concentration of the, the metals in the biosolids, multiplying them by their, their uh, uh, market value, and, and saying that's it. There's a lot of economic and technological challenges that need to be done to do this, but this is something I think that the, the scientists and the chemists can have a, a large input uh, into. We are trying some extractants that uh, are similar to those used by the minerals processing and, and mining industry to see how effective they are in removing some of these metals because there's a kind of an in infrastructure built around these, so uh, being able to put them again into a, a usable form but there's a, a lot of uh, obstacles and challenges that, that present themselves to do this. So really, ultimately, this is the first baby step, knowing the metals are in the biosolids. And uh, from, from now on, there are uh, challenges and, and costs economically and, and technologically that need to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, bio biosolids have been known to contain metals. Um, biosolids are, are treated uh, to meet federal regulations, both for um, pathogens and, and a variety of other things, including metals, uh, so that they can be land applied. They're a very valuable fertilizer in that they have slow release nitrogen, high phosphorus, good, good soil supplement. So they've been used on a lot of public lands and forests. But, but the limitation to using them has been some of their metal content. So there are regulatory, what's called ceiling limits for some of the metals to, uh, that limit their application as a fertilizer. So they've been known to contain metals. Um, there was an ongoing, or a, a previous USGS study and some previous work at, uh, at the Environmental Protection Agency to characterize um, the, the metals and biosolids. So we w wanted to uh, basically look at a, a larger variety of metals, and some of the precious metals are 
are obvious because of their, their value and potential of, of increasing interest in recovering metals. Um, well, no, it, the gold wasn't a known quantity. I mean, people not, it's recently been published that there, there is gold, but uh, at the time we were doing this, it wasn't a, a known quantity. Silver had been analyzed quite a bit, copper, zinc, um, and some of the metals that were regulated. Um, but, but some of these other metals have not been uh, until recently um, uh, evaluated in the biosolids. Uh, yeah, ours, ours is a small scoping study, so we only have a few sites. But we did look at some metropolitan areas and a few mining areas in, in the Colorado Mineral Belt uh, and some semi-rural areas. You can't really look at rural because they don't feed into a wastewater treatment facility, but semi-rural. And at least for the, the precious metals of interest, we're really not seeing a big difference between those groups, which was interesting. We found that to be an interesting. And those are in line with... Uh, the values that were recently reported for, for um, EPA um, uh, archive samples from sewage sludge surveys that they've done. So uh, for, for some of those metals, uh, it, it just seems to be kind of a consistent source. Uh, perhaps that, that would be an interesting research topic. Uh, we, we ran into working with these in the laboratory health and safety issues, uh, so we would have to treat, treat them in some sort of a way to look at them, but um, perhaps in ways that metals wouldn't be affected. But it would be interesting to see them at different stages. And also our, our various sources um, are different types of treatment. The, 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 treat, the amount of treatment is regulated for the biosolids, but uh, ours have been treated in different ways within the regulatory requirements. But that doesn't seem to have teased out of the, the data. It doesn't seem to have made a big difference. Well, it's, it's a high organic matrix. The, the biosolids are running 30 to 35 percent organic carbon. So that's a different matrix than the mining and mineral processing industry is, is accustomed to. Uh, it it's, uh, could feed into more of a soil science understanding, perhaps, of, of some of the extractions that they use in, in understanding uh, metal availability in soils. So you know, understanding this problem is probably going to require input from a variety of, of backgrounds and, and sources of information. Well, they're they're already there, <laughs> um, so. I, I don't, that's not a field of my expertise, but um, the, the bi biological aspect is already there as part of the, the treatment processes to get the, the biosolids. They either go through an aerobic or an anaerobic uh, digestion and composting. That's the subject of our current research, and, and I think it's probably going to turn out that it's not just particulate metals, that they are going to be chemically bound to the material. So understanding how to release them is going to be part of the challenge. Uh, 
Well, I think our next step is to work with the samples we have now and to better understand the forms of the metals and to use them to try to go back and forth to develop ways to extract the metals. Well, the biosolids themselves wouldn't be biosolids for treated in this way if they had above the regulatory limits. So they're elevated, but they're not huge. There probably are some sewage treatment facilities that do have very high metals that they just either incinerate or landfill. Exactly, and the costs and the technological obstacles get in the way. But I think it's important to find some domestic sources of these metals that can perhaps offset, not replace, but offset our need for primary resources or imports. So, you know, looking for a variety of waste streams or other sources like seawater is important for our future. All the precious metals are pretty rare. So, yeah. And, you know, the concentrations we're finding are not big, huge concentrations. They're small concentrations, but for the precious metals, they're significant. Right. And for rare earth elements in particular, for the biosolids, they're not elevated. They're pretty much what you find in coastal abundance. So that was something we were looking for, but they were not elevated. No, I'm afraid that we have agreements with our facilities that provided the samples that we wouldn't disclose where we got them from. Yeah, yes, they were all from wastewater treatment facilities, and we divided them into urban, mountain, and semi-rural. There are eight total, and with some of them we have multiple samples from different parts of the facilities. So we have a total of 19 samples we're working on. Time frame for... Oh, we collected them basically about a year ago, or started collecting them. And they were... We've only been analyzing them since January. We had to go through a sterilization process so we could work with them in our labs. For the bulk analysis, we're using INAA and ICT combination. For the extractions, we're 
we were originally or were originally trying to make it so that the biosolids could stay intact as a fertilizer of some sort. Uh, so the aggressiveness of our treatment will go as along as, as we progress to, to first see if we can um, do a win-win situation where we can remove the the uh, valuable metals as well as maybe some of the regulated metals that cause problems for their use as a fertilizer. And that would be win-win because the, the biosolids could still be a fertilizer and, and um, be more applied because of the, the removal of some of the problem metals. We don't know the answer at this time. It could be a variety of sources, and I suspect it probably is a variety of sources. Um, but, but as I mentioned before, uh, what goes into the wastewater treatment plant is everything that goes down the drain. So it's not just human waste. It's a lot of other potential sources. There you go. <laughs> Thank you.